Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Coming up here on today's show, my final Raiders 53-man roster projection after the last preseason game against the Dallas Cowboys. Jeremy Juggs and I, we're going to be live for the Raiders cut-down date. It's going to be August 29th, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. The Raiders got to go from 91 players all the way down to 53. And I don't want you to miss our insane live show that we do. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you got those notifications turned on. People who I know are part of the Nota Gang. Joshua Garcia, Carson, oh, fucking DD, Juan Aguilar, and John Crouch, man. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for always trying to be one of the very first commenters in our videos. Believe it or not, it goes a long way. And if you want to see yourself on a future Raiders Report show, click that subscribe and turn on those notification bells. All right, let's look at the Raiders quarterback depth chart as it stands right now. And I mean, it's no real secret. Garbers did play a little bit in that final preseason game, five of six. But this is a QB room that's going to keep three quarterbacks. I remember we had a super chat earlier on the Raiders report a few weeks ago about keeping three quarterbacks. The, the way that the quarterback whole thing is structured is you have to have three QBs on your active roster. However, if the Raiders were to not keep one of these guys, they go to the practice squad. I know some people don't want the Raiders to keep Brian Hoyer, but the Raiders are going to keep him. They signed him to be a part of this long-term plan, so these are going to be the three QBs that make the 53-man roster. Let's now go to the running back room. Holy shit, does that graphic look good? Not seeing a star next to Jacobs' name. He did sign a one-year 12, up to $12 million on Saturday before the Raiders' preseason game. To me, there's a lot of interesting depth here on this roster, and the players that I'm going to keep are more because of what McDaniels would do. I wouldn't keep Brandon Bolden. I would rather the Raiders roll with a sincere McCormick. However, I don't think that that's what's going to end up going down. Bolden, if you were to cut him, you'd save $2.23 million. This organization, though, McDaniels, either they believe in Bolden at least being a reliable back. But now that Josh Jacobs is back, how about this? Over, under, we'll say 100 yards versus the Broncos. Will Josh Jacobs rush for over 100 yards against the Broncos? I want you to type yes, or I want you to type no. It's going to be the pinned comment on today's show. The Raiders own the Donkeys. Six straight wins. It's about to be seven, and it's going to be on the back of Jacobs. I don't think he's going to get as near as many carries as what some people say, but I do think he's going to have over 100 rushing yards. So, yeah, give me the over. Let's look at the wide receivers now. A lot of good competition in this group as well. The top three people that are pictured, they're a lock to make it. After that, though, Wilkerson had a really good final preseason game. Uh, Lacey's been okay in turn at times, has battled some injuries, but Chris Sims, man, he had himself a hell of a catch today. He really shows that red zone presence as well. O'Connell has shown love to Keelan Cole this offseason. To me, though, I am going to keep these six because this is the best six for this team and what they need going forward. Philip Dorsett was the tough one for me where I thought maybe they could keep a Keelan Cole or maybe they could keep a Wilkerson. But to take the top off of a defense to be able to free up more space for those other receivers and then your running game, I do think is really important, which is where Philip Dorsett steps in. Let's now look at the tight end group here. Jacob Hollister was recently signed. Cole Fotheringham has had himself a pretty decent preseason. But the Raiders, they're going to keep three tight ends. And it's kind of an easy list for me with Austin Hooper, Michael Mayer, and Jesper Horstead. I should also mention that the numbers that you see next to these players here is me counting out the 53 spots that are going to be on this Raiders roster. I have hit almost 90% on every single 53 man that I have done. I'm still waiting for the day where I get all 53 players correct. Let's now go to the offensive line here for the silver and black. And a lot of tough decisions to make here in. This will be the only depth chart that you see where the starters are not all going to make this roster. And I'm going to get a little bit ballsy here because it's what I would do. And I'm a big believer in this is what's best for the Las Vegas Raiders from an offensive line standpoint. I'm not going to keep Alex Bars because to me, he's about as vanilla as it gets. I would much rather this team and this organization keep a McClendon Curtis, keep a Dalton Wagner. Now, maybe they decide to keep Bars over and attain Moody. However, Bars was playing in that fourth quarter of that final preseason game. Like, that is a big-time alert bell going off in my head. Your starting offensive line is going to be Colt Miller, Dylan Parham, Andre James, Greg Van Roten, and Jermaine Illuminor. It's basically the starting O-line I've been saying for months at this point. 
But then I'm going to keep some of the younger guys. They're going to keep Bayer Munford. They're going to roll with nine offensive linemen as my prediction for the Raiders. If you want to bet on the silver and black against the Donkeys week one, you can do it with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash Raiders. Use promo code Raiders125. Get that 125% deposit bonus. That means for first-time depositors, you put down 100 you get $125 for free to bet with. You can actually put down up to $500 and get $600 for free to bet with thanks to BetUS. Let's now go to the defensive side of the football here. And the Raiders have had an interesting group. The only name that's not featured on screen right now, which is my fault, is Isaac Rochelle, who is a part of this defensive end group and has been kind of battling it out a little bit. I do think he has a shot to make this roster because to me, Max, Tyree, Chandler Jones, they're all locks to make it. After that, it's Malcolm Koontz, Jordan Willis, Isaac Rochelle, even Adam Plant Jr. could all battle it out for that final roster spot. To me, though, I believe that they're going to go with the guy that they believe is the most well-rounded. Malcolm Koontz is probably the best pass rusher. Willis gives you the most versatility for run-stopping, being able to get after the quarterback, and being that fourth man on this defensive end group. And because Tyree Wilson played in that final preseason game, tells me that they're confident in his health, which is why I'm only going to keep four defensive end. Let's now go to the defensive tackle room, and this is a tough group to look at because realistically, there's only like three or four guys that I think are good enough to make most 53-man rosters. But the Raiders are going to keep a bunch of names because they're going to rotate a bunch, and that's just the way that it's going to be. John Jenkins, I did not see him out on the field in that final preseason game. If I did, I just flat out missed him and. Maybe I did because Chugs and I were tailgating and partying all day, but uh, I'm only going to keep six defensive tackles on this list. Nichols and Tillery are kind of the easy ones. They're also going to keep Byron Young, who they drafted in the third round. After that, I'm just going to go with big bodies and then other players who they're going to be willing to bet on. Adam Butler, Nesta J. Silvera. I'm going to go with Neil Farrell Jr. Let's all go to the linebacker room. And again, very, very weak linebacker room here from top to bottom. Divine Diablo, Robert Spillane, they're going to make this team. Amari Bernie, who they drafted in the sixth round, they're going to make it. After that, to me, it's between Drake Thomas, Curtis Bolton, and Luke Masterson. I'm going to go with the guy that's got the most versatility. Masterson was a player that I know they like. I think Bolton and Drake Thomas both find themselves on a practice squad. I think Bolton personally lasts on the squad, Though, if Thomas were to hit the practice squad, I do think another team would potentially go out and sign him. If you don't already know, we'll set a reminder. I'm getting my Raiders tattoo live here on the Raiders report on August 31st. It's this upcoming Thursday. It's going to be probably a close to 16 hours of a total session. Thursday, Friday, other Raiders content creators are going to be on the show. Chugs and I are going to be balling out, playing some Madden. It's going to be a hell of a time. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you're watching. Let's all go to the cornerback room. A lot of tough decisions to make here. And this is probably the most intriguing spots to fill because I could give you so many different answers in the areas that I decide to go, and it's a lot of shrug emojis out there. So for me, I'm going to keep six, and I will mention that one name to keep in mind here is Brandon Faison, who he's going to be put on the IR, and I think he's going to be on the IR. He's going to be out the first four weeks, and then once he comes back, He's going to take a roster spot. That spot, to me, could be between a Sam Webb. Maybe it's between a Lameek Robertson. I'm not going to keep David Long Jr. because he has struggled, and I just I don't see it with him. Yes, Duke Shelley has also struggled as well, but to me, I am more willing to bet on Duke Shelley than I am David Long Jr. So how about this? I want you to pick a corner to keep because, to me, this is what it was, came between. It was Sam Webb, David Long Jr., or Tyler Hall. I didn't know who to keep. I went the way that I did. But let me know. Who would you keep if these were the only names? If you had to pick one, let me know. SW for Sam Webb. DL for David Long. TH for Tyler Hall. Let's now go to the safety room here. Marcus Epps, Trevon Merrick, locked and loaded, going to make this team. Jaquan Johnson was one of my losers. He's not going to make it. Chris Smith is a player that will make this roster. The most intriguing name and maybe one of the most difficult that I had to figure out was Roderick Teamer. I did not put him on my 53 man, which I might shoot myself in the foot for because when I go back and I look at this, this is the one where I'm like, I know that they like him a lot. He's a solid special teams player. Isaiah Paul Mayo didn't play great in that final preseason game, though not many Raiders players did. But to me, his upside is so much higher than Teamer, which is why I ended up keeping Isaiah Paul Mayo. And then to round out this bad boy, Daniel Carlson, 
A.J. Cole, Jacob Bob and Moore. You got one of the best kickers in the league, second best to Justin Tucker, one of the best punters in the league, and then Bob and Moyer at long snapper. So I know I left some names off of my list, but if you could, take a second, let me and Chugs know which names you're like, dude, how did you not put them on your 53-man roster? And I'm glad you asked because, to me, here were the names that just missed it. And this is me being real with you all. Like, if you could keep a few extra players, it would have been these 10 guys right here. Sincere McCormick, Alex Bars, Malcolm Koontz, Adam Plant Jr., Matthew Butler. I do anticipate that a lot of these guys will end up signing with the Raiders on the practice squad, though I could see some other teams potentially trying to bring them in on their roster as well. That's all the time I got for you on my final 53-man roster projection video. Remember, you can always follow me on Instagram. You can always follow me on Twitter at MitchellRent365, and we will be live again on Tuesday, August 29th, 4 p.m. Eastern time for final roster cut-down dates. We'll probably be live most of that day, just kind of counting it down. And if the Raiders make any other moves on Sunday or Monday, don't worry. We got you covered here.